curious if a fractionated CO2 laser can be a game changer for your skin, this deep, powerful, rejuvenating laser can create immense changes in the skin with rejuvenating effects, including collagen stimulation, shrinking of pores, fine lines, wrinkles, improving acne scars, and so much more. But it may not be the right laser choice for everyone. Join me today as I walk you through how a fractionated CO2 laser works, who's the right patient candidate, the results you can expect, and the aftercare that one can expect when receiving this treatment. Also, we're gonna take you through a patient journey of one of my own patients who had this procedure and we'll share the day of her procedure. Also, you guys, as you know, I'm truly authentic. We just finished clinic and Stephanie, my amazing laser specialist, has two more patients to go, so we had to turn on the Pico laser. So if this is a little bit loud in the background, I may switch around rooms, but unless I film these YouTube videos for you guys on the fly, they'll just never be done. So we're doing it after clinic, before clinic, and in the mix of just real life with pure authenticity coming your way. So let's take a deep dive into fractionated CO2 and we'll take you on our patient's journey and explain to you differences between ablative and non-ablative lasers, fractionated and fully ablative lasers, and what the differences mean and how that can change your qualifications as a patient to be selected for one of these treatments so that you'll know if you are a candidate for this treatment and if this would be right for your skin type and your skin goals and the ailments that you're trying to treat. And if not, there's always something that's an alternative and something that may be better suited for each individual patient. So just to introduce myself, my name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel and I'm a board certified dermatologist and double fellowship trained procedural dermatologist and specialize in lasers and aesthetics. And I like to produce these YouTube videos for you as free informational content that's non-sponsored so that you can make better informed decisions to have the best skin of your life at every age. All right, let's dive into it. So what are the skin concerns that is best suited for a CO2 laser? A CO2 laser is an ablative laser. So it's it's a little bit stronger and a little bit more aggressive than your traditional non-ablative lasers. And patients who are best suited for this are patients who have severe acne scarring, whether that's textural regularities with pox-like scarring, box scarring, ice pick scarring, rolling acne scars and different types of scars, even from surgical facelift scars, um, post mose micrographic surgery scars. So it helps with scar remodeling. It also helps with rejuvenation. So people who have severe sun damage, collagen depletion, depletion, elastin depletion, um, people who have brown spots and atrophy or thinning of the skin from severe sun damage would be a candidate for a CO2. Someone who needs a little bit more of a treatment, a little bit higher level of aggression of treatment than just a non-ablative traditional laser. And this can also be utilized for people who have never had a procedure done before and they have some catching up to do. Say someone is 60 years old and they've never had any rejuvenating or laser treatments and they wanna rewind the hands of time, they wanna rewind the clock, and they also wanna get their skin healthier after decades of sun exposure, a CO2 ablative laser may be a little bit more appropriate for that patient than someone who is also the same age, 60 years old, who's been getting a Fraxel every year or Fraxel every five years since the age of 35. So it just depends. But for somebody who needs a little bit more, a little bit more powerful treatment and who has a little bit more downtime and a little bit more of a pain tolerance, it is a little bit spicier, a little bit more uh, discomfort with a CO2 or an ablative laser versus a non-ablative laser um, would be a good patient candidate uh, for this type of procedure. So in summary, wrinkles, acne scars, and sun damage. And say hi to Steph because Steph's amazing. <laughs> So let's talk about Cassidy, my sweet patient. Cassidy is 41 years old and has had no treatments to date to her skin. And she has had a history of excess sun damage and has never had Botox, lasers, and she's not taking care of her skin up to this point. So we wanted to do a fractionated CO2 to reverse the sun damage that has occurred to help with her texture irregularities, to help smooth her skin, to help increase collagen synthesis, elastin synthesis, and just give her a rejuvenating effect. And the reason why we wanted to do a fractionated CO2 is because it was her first time, and although we're going up a level in aggression between ablative and non-ablative, we're going with an ablative laser, the CO2, we're going in a fractionated distribution of the CO2 treatment, which means not the whole skin surface is gonna be treated, just a fraction of it. Little holes are gonna be poked into the skin without taking off that whole first layer of the skin, which would be a fully ablative laser. I'm Cassidy, and I'm here today for a CO2 treatment. Um, I'm super excited. I've been uh, wanting a laser for several years now. I'm aging and I've got the sun damage to prove it and some fine lines and some loss of elasticity. So I'm looking forward to a reset 
and um, I've been following Dr. Keppel um, and using her skin line, skincare line for several years now. So I am feel like this is gonna be a great opportunity for me to have a reset. And I'm looking forward uh, to the, after the healing process and having the fresh skin and um, being able to feel good about myself. So I'd like to take this opportunity to also kind of talk to you about the differences between non-ablative and ablative lasers. So ablative versus non-ablative lasers, the difference is is that ablative lasers vaporize the tissue. They vaporize the skin, it removes skin. Non-ablative lasers do not uh, remove any tissue or remove skin, but it just heats it up in little zones, what we call microthermal zones, or little columns of treatment areas in the skin. And so the ablative lasers vaporize the tissue and they take the tissue out. And depending on how deep it goes, can cause some pinpoint bleeding. Whereas non-ablative lasers just heat up the skin, they don't remove any tissue, and you don't usually have any pinpoint bleeding with non-ablative lasers. Non-ablative lasers are usually like the Fraxel Restore, and ablative lasers are usually like an Erbium or a CO2, like the Fraxel Repair or the CO2 Core. Now the treatment that we're doing today is called the CO2 Core. The reason why it's called the Core is because there's a core of skin that's treated by the laser with sparing of normal tissue Issue within the center of the treatment area, which allows for faster recovery time because you have the epidermal cells that are gonna kind of repopulate the treated area and have a faster healing time and less downtime, which makes that technology a little bit more advanced than what we used to have in the years past to kind of expedite the post-laser treatment period and shorten that duration of downtime. Now, when you're talking about ablative and non-ablative lasers, although the ablative lasers are a little bit more strong and powerful, it doesn't really correlate, at least from my experience, as a provider with more pain or discomfort or downtime. You would think that the CO2 is a little bit more uncomfortable than like a Fraxel Restore or Fraxel also known as the Fraxel Dual, which has the same amount of downtime. It's just the CO2 core downtime is a, maybe a little bit more, but it's still one week and there's a little bit of redness and swelling, but the redness and swelling is maybe up a notch or up a grade than your traditional Fraxel Restore downtime with that redness and swelling. And during the treatment, we just use topical numbing. We don't use nerve blocks or any um, form of anesthesia or analgesia. We don't usually give any benzodiazepines or any um, kind of sedatives because patients tolerate it really well with just topical numbing being put on their face for about an hour, which makes it really versatile and it re really makes it great for my patient population. My private practice is in Newport Beach, California. My patients don't have a lot of downtime. They don't have the highest pain threshold. I love you guys, but I'm in that camp with you. I don't really tolerate pain that well either and my patients don't either, but the CO2 core is great because it's really not that uncomfortable for the results that you get. Now we talk about ablative versus non-ablative. Now let's talk about fractionated ablative and fully ablative. A fractionated laser, whether it's ablative or non-ablative, just, just treating a fraction of the skin. That's why it's called a fractionated. And when you look at the treatment area, it's treating just a fraction of the skin. It's not taking off the full layer of the epidermis. Or, you know, say you go 10 microns, 20 microns, 50 microns, 100 microns. It's not taking that full layer of skin off. It's just treating fractions of it, little zones, microthermal zones of treatment. And so that responds with a faster recovery time and less discomfort. Now, foliar blazers, which are also amazing lasers, but are a lot more painful, a lot more downtime, and more involved for the patient. For example, this laser I played around with last week, which I will talk about maybe in a later video if, it, if I decide to add it to my practice because it's an amazing laser, but it's a fully ablative laser and it is a big gun. I mean, those patients need to be sedated, you know, with some type of analgesic, nerve blocks, not only just topical numbing cream, but a little bit more, you know, anesthetic um, to make the treatment comfortable because you're ablating that first whole layer of the epidermis off versus the CO2 core that we're doing on Cassidy today is a fractionated CO2. And I like this technique and this technology because you're doing an ablative treatment, but you're doing it in such a way that makes it a lot more tolerable, less pain, less downtime, but amazing results. And so when you compare a fractionated to a fully ablative laser, the results with the fully ablative laser may be a, a little bit more significant, but the offset and the cost of that is just more discomfort requiring a higher level of anesthesia and, and analgesia and anesthesia, and then a little bit more downtime, which could be inconvenient for the patient. So instead of one week of just a little bit of inconvenient swelling and you know swelling and redness that you can easily hide on a Zoom call to like you're at home doing vinegar soaks and you know taking prophylactic anti you know bacterial antiviral um, and anti fungal medications. So it's a little bit more involved. So if you can think of it 
Fractionated versus fully ablative. Fully ablative is a little bit more gnarly. Fractionated is a little bit more tolerable. Ablative versus non-ablative. Ablative is a little bit more intense than non-ablative. So whenever you have a more aggressive treatment, of course the results are a little bit more next level, but you always have to offset it and kind of do the cost benefit analysis with the downtime and the discomfort associated with the procedure, which is usually directly proportional to the results that you get. I hope that makes sense. So why is CO2 or fractionated CO2 recommended over other treatments. Again, it's for people who have a little bit more severe skin changes that they wanna address, like a little bit more severe acne scars, a little bit more severe wrinkles or sun damage than a traditional non-ablative. And you would want to choose a fractionated CO2 over a fully ablative if you're not really ready to have that amount of crazy downtime. And you know, you don't have the bandwidth for the aftercare. You know, you have to have probably a driver drive you home um, if you're having a fully ablative procedure and you'll have to have aftercare that includes uh, post uh, procedure medications, vinegar soaks and so forth. So the fractionated CO2 core, I feel like is a great option or any, it doesn't have to be the core laser. Any fractionated CO2 is a good option for someone who needs a little bit more TLC for their skin, but is not ready to take the biggest jump into the most aggressive laser. So severe sun damage, acne scars, fine lines, wrinkles, brown spots, and so forth. Here we're applying numbing cream to the patient's face for her CO2 core laser treatment. So the CO2 core doesn't really require any more anesthetic than just a simple topical numbing cream, which we have sit on the patient's face for about an hour before the procedure. It includes a, a benzocaine 20%, lidocaine, and a tetracaine as well. And we usually have the patient sit with this on her their face for about one hour, and then we wipe the patient clean and sterilize the field and go ahead and do the treatment. And the patient is usually very comfortable with just topical numbing cream alone. Again, nerve blocks and any more severe forms of anesthetic is not necessary. As you can see, the patient is having the CO2 core on her forehead, her cheeks, around the mouth. So the CO2 core is really great for treating areas that are a little bit more severe with respect to rites or fine lines and wrinkles, especially around the mouth, under the eyes. If we just do under the eyes, we don't usually have to put eye shields in. Um, if we do treat the upper eyelids, usually we do place eye shields in the patient's eyes to protect the globe of the eye and they're very comfortable. We put um, numbing drops in the eyes so that the patient doesn't feel them inside the eyes and they're just pretty much just like uh, contact lenses. And the sensations that the patient may feel um, can emphasize how the treatment is tailored for different areas of the face. Um, you can tell that when we get to the more sensitive areas like around the mouth, um, close to the lips and uh, under the eyes, it can be a little bit more sensitive, but we can kind of alter the settings to make it more comfortable for the patient and kind of offset the settings by the number of passes that we do. So here you can see it's myself and my amazing laser nurse, uh, specialist Stephanie, who is in the room with me and we're treating the patient together. Um, Stephanie is so well versed in lasers and has been working uh, with me for over the last 13, 14 years and is probably the most highest, uh, highly trained uh, laser nurse specialist in Southern California and definitely speaks the language of lasers when it comes to physics, endpoints, and uh, laser settings. So as you can see, this is the patient's face immediately after the treatment. She has some redness with the initial reaction. Sometimes the little white dots will linger around for you know about 10 to 15 minutes, but usually dissipate fast after we put the uh, serums on post-procedure, which acts as drug delivery and kind of just absorbs over the next uh, 24 hours. You can expect immediately after treatment to have a little bit of redness, some slight sensitivity and some slight swelling that often dissipates fast, especially when we use uh, post-procedural uh, creams and serums on the patient's skin. You may feel about a 20 to 30 minute um, kind of discomfort or burning sensation of the skin, not severe, just severe enough like it would be if you had a mild sunburn, which hopefully none of you have had, but it feels almost like a mild sunburn like after getting out of a hot shower and it dissipates pretty rapidly, usually about 20 to 30 minutes after the procedure. And sometimes patients will get in the car and turn on the AC or they'll blow some cold air on the face with a gentle fan and it dissipates pr pretty rapidly, especially when we use the post-procedural aftercare that has some um, seaweed extracts and calming extracts that actually cool the temperature of the skin, making it a lot more comfortable. 
Okay, important aftercare tips after fractionated CO2. It's important to hydrate, so drink plenty of water and hydrate from within and externally as well. Endogenous and exogenous, drink plenty of water, but also use moisturizers that are not going to be too occlusive if you're acne prone and that don't also have other active ingredients in it because the barrier will be disrupted and so your skin will be more um, sensitive to actives that you usually can encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. So a light moisturizer, or if you're not acne prone, having something more occlusive like a post laser balm or an aquaphor which has lanolin so be careful because sometimes that can cause uh, reactions and a little sensitivity as well or just plain old Vaseline or you could use like the NMF hydrator by MD Air or Elastin Nectar there's lots of different serums that you could use but definitely follow up with your provider to go over the aftercare to ensure that you're using something that's going to hydrate your skin and be barrier restorative without causing occlusion or acne or sensitivity also using an SPF for the days following. Hopefully you're not in the sun at all. Seeking shade is the best. Staying indoors is best, but if you're going to be out and about about 48 or more hours after your procedure, make sure that you use a good broad based sunscreen like a zinc oxide 7% or higher is recommended or a sunscreen that you use on a day-to-day -day basis that is approved by your dermatologist. In addition, you wanna avoid exfoliants and active ingredients like I already mentioned for obvious reasons for at least seven days after your procedure. Also refraining from makeup is really, really important. So beauty blenders, brushes can harbor bacteria and the fractionated laser creates little zones which are a portal of entry through the barrier, a disruptive barrier, so it could be a nidus for infection. So be really careful with not using makeup or old beauty blenders or brushes one week after your treatment. Usually let those little open circles and holes close so that your barrier is intact so that you can protect your skin from infection. Also working out, that's also a question we get a lot of the time, usually it's best just take one week off of working out, especially if you go to a gym or a studio because it's chock full of bacteria. Gyms and studios, as much as I work out five times a week, but gyms and um, studios can be, you know, harbor bacteria like petri dishes in the microbiology lab. So make sure that you're not putting a towel on your like spin bike or your, you know, bench and then wiping your face with it. Obviously, um, perspiration too, you want to kind of cut that back for about 48 to 72 hours after your treatment. If you work out at home, just make sure that it's clean, that you're not touching your face and that you wait at least two to three days before perspiring. So these important aftercare tips can maximize your results and minimize your downtime and minimize your risk of complications. This is what my face looks like about 20 hours after my CO2 laser at Dr. Kappel's office. I have been um, applying the Elastin Nectar as suggested. I was told to um, not let my face get dry. So this morning when I woke up, I reapplied. Um, I've just taken a shower and used a gentle cleanser and then reapplied the Elastin Nectar. It is, um, it's gotten just a little bit more red as the day has progressed. And, um, you know, my eyes are, are puffier than normal for me. Um, it feels mostly just like a very, very mild sunburn, maybe a little tight when I smile, um, but it doesn't hurt to the touch. And um, it's, you know, I don't have any, you know, real scabbing or, or bruising, so that's good. I uh, slept with my head elevated last night, um, drank plenty of water, and um, I would say after the procedure I had, just a, you know, maybe a peak of a pain level of, I don't know, four at the, at the very most, I would say. And then it subsided pretty quickly. So um, no real discomfort about this process so far. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about it. It looks like, I mean, every inch of my face has, um, you know, was treated and, um, I am looking forward to the days to come to see this nice new skin appear. So I hope that answers your questions about fractionated CO2 and CO2 laser in general. Join me next week for another topic and drop a comment in the comment section. Be sure to like and subscribe this video and share it with someone who may find it useful. All right, as always, you guys love you. Bye.